my next guest played guitar in that video, and he has ever since. Mr. Joey Allen, what's up, sir? What is up, Mr. Don? Look at you. Look at you by the pool. This is where, where are you calling from? Dude, what? I, I took my wig off. <laughs> uh, I'm in my backyard. It's sunny Southern California, and I thought I'd give, you know, my East Coast brothers a little, a little heat for the day. Uh, we could use it, man. I'm, my, my arms and shoulders are smoked from shoveling snow for the last three weeks here, man. It's been brutal, man. That, that pool, I'd like to come out there and take a nice dip. Dude, you're always welcome out here, man. I got a, I got a beer cooler right over there. Ah, yeah. And a barbecue right there in the <laughs> pool, and we're ready anytime you want, bro. Uh, listen, I will definitely take you up on that uh, sometime, hopefully in the near future. But, you know, we're looking at Uncle Tom's Cabin from 1990. My friend, did you Woo! ever think when you were writing that song, making that video, that 30 years later you would still be playing that song? You know, the great late Janie Lane wrote that song, uh, reading a TV guide on the tour of, I think it was probably the tour for the first record. He saw some movie called Uncle Tom's Cabin and he broke that thing out when he brought it to the band. It was, it was pinned and killer. And when we, when we went into the studio, I'm, I'm a guy that likes heavier tunes. So it, I was stoked. Um, and I was stoked. It was a single and the, and the video was killer. Um, it was a lot of fun to be part of that, that, uh, that song and uh i never you know when you do stuff like that you never think that far, far forward you're in the moment you know just having a great time so fond fond memories of making that video and that song yeah and that and those are the days where you had the big budgets for the videos right joey and mtv was obviously such a huge support for you guys um but it does come down to the song and you're right and i just you, man if there's anybody with giant hits it's Warren and so yeah 30 years later it's because the songs are there you had giant you have giant hits in your catalog that unfortunately because of the business model Joey no m there's probably not a rock band anymore that that can have a giant hit like that one or cherry pie or you know any number of the other ones that you had heaven you know you can go down the list you you had a ton of them but that's not the business model anymore so you guys were one of the last of the breed to really be able to have household name songs for that genre i mean being being around from the late 80s into into the early 90s i guess you're i guess you're right um, and it's unfortunate because it's, you know, we've made new music since then. We've made three records, two with Robert Mason, who I know is one of your bros. Um, yeah. my, my brother, Bobby Teddy, as I call him. And, <laughs> and there's some great songs on there, but just the same vehicle behind music isn't there anymore. There's not the real, you know, all the labels and all the, all the radio independent promoters. It's just totally different than it, than it used to be. Um, so we're re relegated to to relegated to touring, and and playing those hits, which is fine. You know, it's fine to have that catalog and be able to play it live, play it live well, and and have fun while we do it. You know, so that's what it is. And and as we look to the future, you know, we'll see if there's any new music in in the future for us. There's always something creeping around in our camp, so we'll see. But you're you're absolutely right. I mean, it's we're 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 absolutely lucky to have those tunes in our holster. Yep. Lane wrote them. He was a great songwriter and uh, hats off to that guy for sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, definitely one of my proudest moments was um, when we had Janie on that metal show. Um, and unfortunately, it was a couple of weeks before he passed. And um, but he he uh, he got to I'm glad we, we I'm glad we gave him the opportunity to walk down memory memory lane one more time and, and talk about his career and and he real actually at that time he seemed to be in a real good place he he was real up he you know he was uh, he was on the wagon he was he seemed healthy I had a great conversation with him off the set you know things look good but you know unfortunately he was battling his demons for a long long time but I I gotta say man for me you know to, to to let that guy come on the show walk down memory lane you know we you know we cherish this music so much I, I was really happy that he got a chance to do that with us yeah I mean you guys did a great job with him and I I watched that and and um I mean kudos for you guys to get him on there he he was skinny at the time I think it was after we tried the the um the reunion for 
about a year, which was which started off great and just crashed and burned, and, and it was unfortunate. And we all tried to do as much as you can for a guy that's having a hard time yeah. with with substance. And 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 um, at some point, you know, there's there's not a lot you can do, and you gotta you gotta hope that they have the strength in them to pull it off. But it's it was a wicked ride for him, and then uh, just tragic tragic continues you know it's it's not any better today than it was when it happened i miss the guy like a brother we spent a lot of years together uh on and off the road making some beautiful music um as well as as well as having some fun with family and friends you know so it's it's unfortunate for sure but but at least we got the the music to remember him by and and we go out when we can yeah. not in the last year for sure and and play those tunes you know and in remembrance and and uh of him and, and what he meant to us for sure. Yeah. And, but you know what, man, Joey, you, you know, as well, as I do S sometimes, uh, sometimes that, you know, that, that chaos within somebody is, especially a songwriter is what <laughs> kind of gives birth to great songs. I mean, I know you're a Thin Lizzy fan, you know, Absolutely. Phil, Phil Lina died at 36 years old. Um, but, but that, that inner turmoil is what made him, a great songwriter. So unfortunately the same, the same with Janie. Um, I know nowadays a lot more, uh, there's a lot more communication with artists because now a lot of them 30 years on 35, 40, even, you know, they're mentoring people, you know, guys like Alice Cooper are reaching out to people and saying, Hey, you know, I can help you and all this stuff. So, uh, you know, unfortunately it, it didn't happen for Janie, but like you said, the tunes are there and sometimes that sometimes the chaos is what, what makes a great artist, unfortunately. So, uh, um, I, I, I couldn't agree with you less. You, you nailed it right there for sure. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, so, so you guys haven't played. You, you mentioned playing live. Um, it's been what a year now? A year since your last show? It has been a year. Um, it was. It's. I think it's like three hundred and sixty-eight days. Eric. Eric sent an email the other day with, with, uh, with the gig, the last gig we played, and we looked at it, and it was just like that was a year ago. I can't believe it, and everything was smoking along. We were looking forward to the 30th anniversary of cherry pie, which hit last September. We had sold out shows through the summer and uh, you know, the rug got pulled out from under us just like every other musician and, and, and a lot of different businesses did. So, um, you know, until it's safe to go back out there, here we sit. Well, yeah. So, so we're, so, and that's, that's a good point. We should mention that it is, it's the, it's the slightly delayed 30th anniversary <laughs> of, uh, of cherry pie if you could just put up the uh the album cover for, so people could see it but uh i'm sure obviously everybody's very familiar <laughs> with this record uh, uncle tom's cabin's on there obviously the title track uh huge hit um me give me a give me a 30 30 years remembrance of uh making the album anything about that time that that uh, brings brings a good memory it, you know what? It was just, we had just gotten off the road. A lot of that was written while we were on the road. Oh, wow. With, Mo with Motley Crue. We did um, about four to six months with Motley Crue on the Dr. Feelgood tour. And and then we got off, I think we did 286 shows in 16 months on that first tour. And, and um, it was time to go into the studio for the second one. So I remember when we went in, we were, we were, it was great time. You know, you're, you're playing better because you just got off playing, you know, on the road. I remember at the time Tommy Lee came by the studio. He had like a week off from that tour because they went on for like another 10 months after we got off that tour. And he came by and listened to some of what we were doing. It just, it was just a magic, magical time. I mean, we're just getting off a double platinum record for the first one. Yeah. We're, we're firing on all cylinders because we're playing so much. Everybody's getting along great. There's really not at that time any wives to get into the mix and Yoko Ono it up as, as, <laughs> yeah. as I would like to say, but it was just it was the best time in the world, you know. Yeah, you, um, you make a good point, Joey, because I hear that from a lot of musicians in terms of you know when they get into the studio right after they come off the road, they they feel energized, they're hot from playing, and to take that energy into the studio really produces great results. 
yeah i mean that's it's it's the right time to go into the studio like right now wouldn't be the right time because we haven't played together in mm. a year you know i don't know who's playing at home i can tell you this that i haven't been playing as much as i would normally just because i'm not playing live and i you know i as soon as i know there's gigs in the horizon which i think is going to be about june at this point you know i'll start tuning up my my rig probably in the next month yeah and start going through what i do but it's just like it's like anything if you can't go out and if you're a sports guy you know sports have been lucky because they can continue and do it without audiences because there's television but when it comes to gigs we rely on our fans to come to shows and that ain't happening anytime soon until we can do it safely so you know you're not going to be you know practicing as much at least i'm not you know what i mean yeah i got you um and i don't, I don't want to speak for every everybody i know a lot of my friends are out there doing gigs on the internet i see some killer stuff my friends in la guns have done you know some other guys are putting together these all-star gigs where kip winger did one and yeah it's killer but that's just not me I, i'm taking a break until it's time to go back and rock so warren hasn't done any uh the, you guys haven't done any of this the streaming the live things or any of that no, we haven't done any of that. The only thing I know Mason did an in machine record with George and, and, and Jeff, which which I'm happy for him because he needs to have that outlet. He's high strung, as you know, Don. And <laughs> do I ever? He got, you know, I can almost let, remember let him, a few nights hanging out with him. Yeah, I let him do his lead singer <laughs> thing with George and 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 and, uh, and Jeff. And I'm glad I, I think that's a great project for him and yeah. a cool band and and so, but besides that, I don't think, you know, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I don't think anybody's doing a whole lot. Yeah. No, and I'm going to have Robert on in a couple of weeks to talk about the End Machine album because I loved the first one. So I, I'm with you. I, yeah, he need, he needs an outlet. So um, yes. that's cool because, he's, you know, he's playing with George Lynch, obviously, and Jeff Pilsen. You know, what a cool band. Uh, so Absolutely. I'll talk to him about that. And and for the people who, you know, look, you know, the the hard rock fans are the best, but sometimes they get they get stuck in the old days. And so for people who don't know, you know, Robert Mason has been singing with you guys for several years now you have two records with robert that i would suggest people check out because warren just doesn't rely uh on their back catalog they've got two records with robert rock uh, rockaholic and was it louder harder faster well sir yeah you got, you nailed it. so i would suggest people check th that out um talk about finding robert and sort of knowing like he's the guy Wow. Well, we were on the reunion tour with Lane and he was struggling to, to stay sober and it was it was difficult. And so we had a gig. There's one gig out in Oklahoma called Rocklahoma. Yep. Um, and and we were set to headline the Saturday night with Lane. And I went the day before because Lane was in rehab um, and we didn't know what was going to happen. So I actually went out there a day before to blow off some steam and kind of have, you know, have a few adult beverages and relax and see some friends. And the first person I saw at that gig was Eddie, believe it or not, came rolling up to me. Trump. What's going on? What's going on? You know, we heard this Vegas problem with Lane. And, and then the second person I saw was Mason. And, and uh, I don't know if I could say, he was in a band at the time called Big Cock. Um, <laughs> I, I'm sure you I'm sure if you know Mason, you've you've seen that band, a, a lot of fun out of Phoenix, uh, where he lives. Um, and his band was there to play the gig on Saturday on the side stage. And he was off my radar um, because we we were in in it with Lane. So we're like, mm -hmm. here's this happening. And when we had the struggle that we were having, when I saw him, it was just right away. You know, I'm like, oh, my God. And I literally... I don't feel good about it, but I pulled him away from his band for a minute and just said, Hey man, you know, do you, do you know any of our tunes to where if Lane doesn't show up tomorrow night, you can get up and sing. And that's how it started. And then I just said, I don't know how this is going to continue, but if it keeps on going down this path, um, unfortunately we're not going to be able to continue because we didn't want Lane to, to, to die when he was on the road, just to go out and do gigs. Yeah. You know, we wanted him to get healthy, and if he, if if it was off the road, we understood. We but we wanted to keep going. Sure. So at that time, you know, I just told him. I said the other guys are coming in tonight. You know, let, let's have a conversation. And I said roll in tomorrow because we had a seven a.m. sound check. Ugh. I said roll in tomorrow at, at our sound check, and uh, and he rolled in, and the first person he saw was Jerry, and Jerry s said the same thing I did. 
So it was like the stars were aligned. Yeah. You know, and then when we continued down the reunion tour, Don, it just got worse and worse for Janie. And, and we just said, look, you go home and get healthy. We're going to go this route. And, and we called Mason and, and we had already jammed with him once um, off the grid. And he just nailed it. I mean, what hair I have on the back of my neck stood up. <laughs> he was singing and I, we just knew dude i mean you, yeah. you know him he's just he's oh a, it's his voice is is incredible and yeah. um and he and he does do the back catalog you know just just great um so i'm really happy for you guys that those stars align because you know again we talk about these these hits and let's face it, your deep cuts you know mr rainmaker and big talk and all you know like you know it's not just the hits but man that back catalog Catalog deserves to be to be heard live and to be done justice and and Robert really does that and like I said there, there's two albums that you did with him as well that that people should you know let's get up to date a little bit here with what Warren's doing and uh, and and check out those albums with Robert as well um, I got you sent a little fun fact that I have to that <laughs> I don't want to forget but before Warrant before Metallica, there was yes. a Joey Allen Lars Ulrich collaboration. There was, and Lloyd Grant, who actually oh, played wow, on yeah. the Lights on Metal Massacre, Lloyd was in the band, and it was two of my high school friends. And it was right when Lars moved out from Denmark; he moved into Newport Beach, California, about you know four or five miles from where my parent where I lived and grew up. Um, and he put an ad in the Recycler magazine, if everybody can think back to the Recycler days. Mm -hmm. And he was just a drummer looking for a, for a hard rock band. And, and uh, I looked at his ad and called him up. And I think we jammed for about on and off three, four, five, six months. Yeah. Um, and that's when he introduced me to like, you know, Trespass and, and, and Motorhead and Maiden and all these the new wave of British metal. It must have been 1980, maybe 81 at the most. I don't know when Metallica started, so maybe it was 80. Yeah, well, yeah, Lars and um, Lars was yeah, he was huge on that when he came to America. You know, he turned Brian right. Slagle onto a lot of that stuff too. So you know, in that Southern California scene, Lars was spreading the word about all this great music that back then, right? You could only get on import. You had to really right. search it out. So we didn't we didn't know a lot of, about a lot of it. Who, nobody knew Trespass. Yeah, I went. I went in and got um, the Tigers of Pantang with, yep. with with Sykes in the band, which is he's just amazing. Uh, there was a place in uh, in Costa Mesa, not far from where we both lived, called Music Mart, and they had a full killer import section. And we used to go there, and he'd show me, you know, different records. Get this one. Get, yeah. get this one. Get this one. And I <laughs> and I got into it, you know. And then he, I remember, he went back to Denmark for a trip for a few weeks, and while he's away. I hit Lloyd up. I'm like, hey, man, let's get another drummer in here and keep going. And Lloyd wanted to stay with Lars, and that's when it ended. Um, but it was a fun time. We were both young kids, and, you know, I think Warrant played a gig uh, with, with Metallica in, like, Canada after that, and they were exploding, and we were just coming up. Um, it, was, it was Black Crows, Warrant, Metallica, and Aerosmith. Wow. In front of like 30,000 people and it's c and &E, uh, Grandstand in, in Canada and in, in Toronto, I think. So the night before we had a night off, we went out and reminisced and had a good time. But I'm, I'm, I'm uh, uber happy for him and the success that he's had. And that band's, you know, done, done great things for the world of metal and themselves. So God bless him. But just think, Joey, it could be Wartalica. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, you know, for you, you know this just as well as I do, Don, and and, and I I ripped this off, so I'm not taking taking credit for it. But a band's, you know, like 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 five different fingerprints, right? And then when you put it together, it's a fist, yeah. you know. And and that fist of Metallica, uh, you know, is the four guys that started it. Obviously, Cliff's not around anymore, which is a great bummer. And and Jason went on to do his own thing. But, you know, once that machine got rolling, I think the creative monsters in it continue. And it's the same thing to a lesser degree for Warrant. You know, we're, we definitely didn't, didn't hit the success that Metallica did, you know, for whatever reasons here or there, but it's makes its own fist, you know, and yep. we've still got four members in the band. We're missing, you know, 
the chief songwriter from the first few records and he's sadly missed, but there's nothing we can do about it. So we, we got really lucky, like you said, with Robert and, and we're blessed to have him and we go out and have a lot of fun when we can tour. So. There yeah. And um, let's let's face it, you know, especially in rock and roll, uh, the number one sign of success is longevity. And you certainly have had that. Your 30th and the slightly delayed 30th anniversary of Cherry Pop. Are you going to do a, a 30th anniversary like maybe in 2022? I know it's fudging, fudging the years at that point, but you, you haven't gotten to do a proper tour for yeah, it. 30.5 right? or a 31.5, <laughs> I think I think it should say maybe, you know, keep it fun and tongue in cheek like we usually do we'll see man yeah. as long as we can get out there and people can safely come to shows and and not be harmed that's what we're all about it's all about fun and entertainment so don i'm hoping to see you out out when we get to the east coast or i'm sure you'll be coming to one of these shows to MC it or something so when you do it we'll get together and have an adult beverage and, and, and chill a little bit yeah i'd love to man because you and i have never really had the to- a chance to sit and talk which is why i was excited today um and especially you got nothing to plug so um i'll, I'll plug dude, ari hit me he's like what do you want to talk about i'm like dude, there's there's been nothing you know well but I'll t- I, you know I, I i totally am jumping at the chance to uh to talk with you because i've seen you at gigs and you've always been talking to people or i've been doing this and i i'm not one to go up and bug people in the middle of a conversation but what you've done for the world of metal with you know, with your guys on that metal show is just amazing. I know you're a huge fan of it. I am a huge fan of metal myself. There's, if you looked at my record collection, it probably looks a lot like yours. And, and so I want to take my my hat off to you for all you've done for the uh, for us us rock warriors out there. And it's really appreciated, man. And thank you for the opportunity to come on your show and talk. Oh man, that will do that. That means a lot, especially coming from you, man. A, a lot of respect. Um, if if I can plug something for you, if it'll put a few bucks in your pocket, if if I plug the Warren skateboards, will that help? <laughs> Those things sold out, isn't that they funny? Are? They're not. They're, put that. I, I, put, I, the, I, put the skateboard up. So it's just I know a, the cherry pie one sold out. I, I I just want people to see them, even if they're not available, because maybe you'll make them again. But these. I don't know. I'm. I'm. A, I'm. This is I'm so a, cool. There you go. I don't think that one's sold. Look at that thing, huh? Who doesn't want that deck? Come who, on. Who doesn't want to fall off that and crack their skull open on the street? That's right. <laughs> I got one for. I got one of the cherry pie ones for my son, and uh, I got on it and I quickly got off of it because yeah. even though I grew up in SoCal learning how to skateboard and surf and everything it's not what it used to be you know what i'm saying no no and that's uh from volatile skateboards and can we get can you get that over at warrantrocks.com i'm sure there's links I think, yeah i think you can get it we've got facebook for warrant warrantrocks.com has stuff like that on it i know jerry and eric keep all that stuff up to date up to date excuse me and i know that um dates are out there we're hoping to get back on the road this summer we will see you know, we're hoping for June. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, we've got 12 dates booked in July um, and they're not canceling right now. So it's all just uh, dependent on what goes on with this vaccine and, and the health of, of our fans, really. I mean, we're ready to go. We, you know, we'd, we'd actually have to get a day of rehearsal in probably. So we'd roll into the first gig a day early and jam for a few hours to get it tight. But, um, you know, playing the same song for 30 days or for 30 years, excuse me, you don't have to. You don't have to practice a whole lot. Yeah, it's a quick sound check and let's roll. Uh, Muscle memory. And yeah, in the meantime, enjoy that beautiful pool and your little puppy that's been peeking out every once in a while <laughs> while yeah, we've been talking. Ja- Jackson, the, Jackson the Chihuahua. I'm a Chihuahua fan, so I got... I got three of them rolling around here somewhere. Yeah, well, enjoy the dogs of the pool and the, right. the beautiful weather down there, and I hope to see you out on the road soon, my brother. Hey, thank you for having me, Don. We'll be, see you soon. Stay safe. Be well, Joey. Yeah, check right. out warrantrocks.com for all tour dates and see those guys when they come around.